We're doing something new here in July. If you wanna be part of the Intellectual Property School, where we teach you all of this holding company, structure, formation, we teach you how to sub YouTube companies, there's a lot into it. We're doing it a different way. First of all, there's an application. The application's below. You go ahead, go through the application, and if your answers are in line with our thought process, we will set up a free call for you to see if the Intellectual Property School is for you. So let's go ahead and get into this next video. I've come up with a new concept called the Holding Company Engineer. Now, what is the Holding Company Engineer? It's a person who is governed by paperwork, process, and sequence. Now, what does all that mean? First of all, let me go ahead and share a story with you. Last week, I went to the bank and I walked out the bank with $75,000 in business credit, $25,000 on the credit card and $50,000 on line of credit. How did that happen? I had the paperwork. And this is one of the things that trips up a lot of people. You have a lot of entrepreneurs out there who are not filing taxes. And let me go ahead and say this. If you're not filing taxes, you will not be able to buy a house in the traditional sense. Virtually everyone is looking for the last two years tax returns. That is huge. You have people out here who are making a lot of money, who are renting houses because they don't have the paperwork. They don't have the proper structure. They don't have the things that they need to have to make sure that from a land owner perspective, that they can go ahead and own land. And just like I walked into the bank with a two and a half year old company and walked out with $75,000 because my paperwork was in order. And this is something else. When I was going out and getting a lot of business credit, I have almost a million dollars worth of business credit. Credit cards are easy. If you have an LLC, you have business bank accounts, credit cards are easy to get but lines of credit, that's a different animal. That is a different subject matter. That is a very different way of looking at this. So how do you get a business line of credit? Let's go ahead and say $250,000. You're gonna need to have at a minimum one year of positive tax return. Now, what do I mean by positive tax return? This could not be a year where you're taking losses. You cannot have a bunch of losses. And this is one of, because I, I have a car rental company and this year, last year I took losses and this year I'm taking losses. And there was a lot of conversation. Fortunately, my revenue was high enough but I know from a factual standpoint, going to a bank with a tax return that is showing heavy losses is going to bring up, you know, one bank, I had to talk to them not once, not twice, but three times, and they finally approved the line of credit. But once again, and this is gonna be really like, here's, let's have this conversation. All right, I have seen this over and over again. You can get $100,000 worth of business funding and bad credit is okay. I have seen this all over YouTube. I've seen it all over Instagram. Let me go ahead and explain something to you. There is no way in the world that you're gonna get any sizable business credit. And this is business credit cards. We're not even talking about the lines of credit, but business credit cards with derogatory bad credit. What is derogatory and bad credit? You might be able to slide by with one late payment and that late payment was six, seven years ago. You can get in the door with that. But if you have recent lates, if you have a late payment of 30 days or 60 days or 90 days has happened within the last year, you're not getting any business credit. It ain't happen. It's going to be an automatic no. It's going to be automatic no. So as an entrepreneur, your personal credit needs to be straight. What is straight? Above 700, I, ideally above 720. If your credit is 720, above 720 or 850, you get the same interest rate. So you want to have credit that's above 720. You don't want to have a lot of inquiries. I recently 
Well, this year I got turned down for a credit card because I had too many inquiries. And right now I'm in a state of gardening. I will apply for business credit products because that leave an inquiry. But once again, I have slowed down my massive inquiry Latin credit development journey. Because once again, to be a holding company prop engineer, the first thing that you gotta do is make sure that your holding company situation is set up correctly. That's perfect. And this, this is one of the things that I teach in the intellectual property school, how to make sure that your holding company situation is set up correctly. Now, I get a lot of people who already have a business, which is perfectly fine. There are remedies and strategies to work around that. And I line that out into intellectual property school. So one of the things that you have to do, and I'm gonna lay it out for you. Let's say your name is Ed. And Ed, you want to start a company, and then you're coming here on the YouTubes and you find me, and then you're kind of interested in this intellectual property school thing. So what we're gonna teach you is number one, one and like I'm just gonna be straight up I don't even try to appeal to people with bad credit because typically and let me go ahead and explain something before we get back to Ed if you have bad credit due to the advances of technology it's just gonna get harder and harder and harder to correct your credit as we go forward I think in five years it's gonna be pretty much impossible to fix bad credit because of the advances of technology so if you have bad credit, you need to be working on that night and day to fix it, to get things off, to pay people, to work out deals, whatever you need to do to get your credit straight. Because this is going to be, good credit is going to be a huge asset in you developing the strategies, tactics, and techniques of laying out your holding company. It's gonna be an invaluable asset. All right, so your name is Ed. And Ed, you're, you're around here, you, you're thinking about starting something, you, you, you come across the YouTube channel, and it's like, I like this holding company stuff. And this is what we're gonna teach you, Ed. We're gonna teach you, number one, how to set up your holding company. We're gonna teach you how to set up your operating company. We're gonna teach you how to set up your YouTube company. We're gonna teach you how to, and this, this right here gives you tax benefits that you cannot, like you can only imagine. This gives you tax benefits you can only imagine. And we're gonna teach you how to do certain things depending upon your strengths. Because uh, one of the things that's gonna be coming up is a personality test and to test out your strengths and to kind of aim you into what businesses you should get into. Because I've been doing YouTube videos for 14 going on 15 years. I think it'll be 15 years August. And how could I do this that long? I like it. It fits into my personality strong points. Communication, presentation, art, it all fits into my skill sets. So this is one of the reasons that I can do it long time because, or long term, is because I like it. And I want you to do a business that you like because I'm gonna share a little story with you. When I first came on YouTube, I was in the storage auction space and I was selling my book, Making Money, A to Z with Self-Storage and Auctions, right? And that went well 2010, 2011, 2012, 13, 14. 2014 ish, it got a little funky. And one day I woke up and I was like, I don't like my audience. I didn't like the people that I was dealing with. Even though there were some really good people, hardworking people, there was just a lot of pests, environments, and trolls. And I just decided I'm leaving. And what I should have did, because I now know this from the benefit of not doing it, I should have started a brand new YouTube channel back then. That's what I should have did. I didn't do that. And what I did is I piled content and piled content and piled content onto the same channel. And this created a hot mess. And this is one of the things you will learn in the intellectual property school, how to set up a congruent YouTube channel that can make you millions. My channel has made me millions of dollars. what do you think about that? And once again, it's about structure and paperwork, structure and paperwork. Because once you have your structure, your paperwork together, this opens the door for you to do so many things. You gotta have your tax forms and a lot of people don't wanna file taxes. And let me just go ahead and say this, Ed, if you're not filing taxes on the business side, you're not gonna be able to get large lines of business credit. 
it ain't it ain't gonna never happen it's just not going to happen and this is one of the things that you will have to have especially you can get chase business credit cards pretty easily but you cannot get a chase line of credit unless you do business with the bank and the bank says hey we like your business we like your cash flow here's a line of credit but other than that you're going to have to present chase with tax returns to get your line of credit to get yourself situated, to set yourself up for success with Chase Business Banking. And it all comes down to paperwork, taxes, pay stub. And this is something that's funny because I was watching the video talking about creating your own pay stubs. And before I started to sequence myself, I had no problem renting apartments or even houses without pay stubs. I just show them my bank statements and boom, you're approved. So one of the things that you have to look at and one of the things that you have to recognize and understand is the sequence, the process of paperwork. It's so important. And this is pretty much what I spend a lot of time teaching you in the intellectual property school how to go ahead and get your paperwork in order. At the moment, I literally have eight different, nine, I have nine LLCs. And outside of the newest one, the majority of my LLCs are two years old. And literally I can just go to bank and present those LLCs and walk out with $75,000 because I already have the paperwork and it's properly aged. I can't do it with the new LLC. Can't do that. All I could do is open up a business checking account and let that, let it age. So aging, sec sequences, setups, and I understand you want it now. You want it now. And I got a question for you. What were you doing 10 years ago to present, your, prepare yourself for today? Because this is the thing, it's all about making proper decisions in the past. So your present is more what you want. Your presence is what you want, how you want it, how you're set up, the things you wanna do, the things you wanna prepare, the way you want to move forward. That all comes from the decisions that you made in the past so once again you want to go ahead and learn how to have the proper paperwork have the proper tax work have the proper checking accounts have the proper pay stubs to put yourself in a position to be a holding company engineer because let me go ahead and just go ahead and drop what can happen to you if you position yourself to be a holding company engineer start that first company and you get it set up set up means that it's running it's making money and it doesn't require a lot of your time you may have to be there you may have to sign paperwork you may have to attend meetings but i got a friend by the name of michael michael's company is situated so much that his neighbors thought he was retired because he was always at home so that's getting your first company set up and once you get your first company set up and then you can move to your second company and then get your second company going and then you can move to your third company and now once again you don't have to have 30 40 50 companies but two to five companies that are situated that are set up that are making money can literally change your life it can literally change every moment of your life so this is one of the things that i want you to do is to go ahead and sit down and think hard about the structure, the paperwork, the LLCs, the EINs, the business banking, the S Corp. This is the United States of America. It's about paperwork. I want you to think, I walked in the bank with an older LLC that hasn't done any business and walked out with $75,000 in business credit all because my paperwork was in order. And this is one of the things that you will have to do is get your paperwork in order so you can flourish and prosper in the future. All right, so if you wanna be part of the intellectual property school where we make money with our minds, um, what you need to do is go below, fill out 
the application. And if your thoughts and our thoughts come together, then we will send you a link where you can get on a phone call where we can discuss matters further and bring you into the intellectual property school. And once again, once again, this is a great time to get in. This is a great time to get in because we have a lot of things that are going up and I can tell you the price of the intellectual property school is going to really, really go up in August. I can tell you that right now because there's a lot of good stuff that's going to be in there to help you receive the information and the training that you need to prompt that personal transformation. I wasn't always driving a Porsche. I wasn't always wearing a Rolex. I wasn't always living in a high rise. And this is the manifestation of me becoming a holding company engineer and learning how these things work and learning the technology and learning the strategy and the paperwork of having the proper holding company structure. So. My name is Glendon Cameron. I'll see you again in another episode here at I Eat Fire. I just love that name and let's get into it. So if you want to be part of the Intellectual Property School, go below, hit that paperwork, and I will see you guys in the next one.